Hi guys! Hi everyone! Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Sylvia and Corey and Tavi Lee Bichanga. Here's our lovely friend Eve. Somebody said I need to introduce her. This is my friend Eve. Ta-da! <laughs> That's my mom's famous line. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> so, um, today is going to be a little bit of a different video. Um, today we are just going to be videoing here at home and mm -hmm. something that we've kind of brainstormed well we've talked about it ever since i Eve just want to let you know something yeah. my brain is like empty well that makes two of us <laughs> <laughs> two, <laughs> two brainless friends i guess <laughs> so guys today we are going to be just here at home and we're actually going to be doing something that we've both talked about since she's here we've talked about it before and that is we are going to try to help each other and inspire each other to eat healthy and exercise daily and to try to lose a little bit of weight so today um we've already been doing it for the past what is it two days now yeah it's very new um <laughs> But today we're going to be doing some food prep and we just thought we'd bring you guys along. Um, I got Corey to bring home 5 kgs of chicken breast last night and I cut them up and put them in marinade overnight. So we are going to get ready to grill those and I'm going to be cutting up vegetables and we're just going to talk with you guys as we go along. Yes. So Eve, tell them what you're going to be doing. Okay, well I'm going to be prepping food and yeah. I'm also going to start the Jico. Jiko is like a Kenyan. Yeah, I'm gonna put charcoal in this big iron pot thingy and I'm gonna start a fire and then we're gonna grill all the chicken. Yeah. And I'm excited about losing weight too because I've gained about 60 pounds in the past two years. Okay. And I was four, four years, I was at a decent weight. Okay. But I've lost it because of a lot going on in my life and then I had surgery mm -hmm. you know when you're in pain your body is inflammation then you don't feel like doing anything then you can get depressed then the more you push your body when it's already in pain it can just amplify everything amplify everything and your body's not ready to lose weight so right. yeah now that I'm healed up and gaining strength yeah I'm gonna lose it and honestly for me I've been fat for the past five years, um, just candidly saying it how it is. Um, I think before, when I was um, early 20s, late teenage years, I was all about dieting and all about, you know, I would skip supper and sometimes I wouldn't do it the healthiest way, like I would be constantly hungry. Um, there was a few times I was, I would say borderline anorexic as far as my thinking about dieting and like starving myself and a few times that I forced myself to throw up and things like that like I was kind of headed down a wrong path a wrong path I so mean I was do this healthy yeah I was do I was really thin for my body type I was not really thin I would say I was at a good weight mm -hmm. but I basically starved myself to get there and then um I also went through a really hard time in my life. It was over the time I left the mission here in Kenya and I was basically sent home mm. um, and I was without my family and just going through a really hard time and the weight just piled on that and happens. I don't even know where how much weight I need to lose. But anyway, I've I've now gained that weight and had it for the past five years. Now I've had a child which thank the good Lord, I didn't gain a lot of weight no, with having Tavi. I think Not I gained all. between maybe eight, 10 pounds, <laughs> something that like that. staircase helped you. <laughs> yeah, probably the staircase. <laughs> which speaking of that, <laughs> Eve is telling me, go do the staircase three times. Yes. And then I go do the staircase three times without stopping last night and the night before. Come today, I can barely walk, and she's but been helping we, me do stretches. Then we and... do stretches and slowly doing yeah. really. Now I come from an athletic background, like twenty years ago. I am forty three years old. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, she was doing then, everything. I'm always amused with I, she did pole vaulting. That's just <laughs> well, I did blows pole vaulting. My mind. I played softball for fifteen years. I was very athletic when I was young, mm -hmm. and then I got saved when I was. 
probably 1920, no, 21 is when I asked Jesus into my heart. And I threw all my trophies away. I just threw them, I was like, I thought that I was invincible. I thought I could do anything. And well, then, I mean, you were on the boys wrestling team. Cool, I was, so. I, thought I was on the <laughs> Pretty boys. invincible. I was, on, <laughs> <laughs> I was on the boys wrestling team, which really made me strong mentally. And you physically. don't want to mess with her. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mess with me. But she'll put a she'll put you in a in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Choke them out. <laughs> well, I do surprise myself sometimes. You, like if somebody I, you do does surpri- come at me, I find myself just protecting myself automatically. You do but surprise <laughs> me at times as well. <laughs> I'll say, don't touch me. Yeah. Like, okay. So anyway, <laughs> she's a very warm, loving person, but she's a strong woman. So anyway, don't touch. I, <laughs> but I've also been at the major weakest points of my life. So as I was a strong in my past, I was in brutal car accidents that broke my pelvis in three places. I had, um, I've had seven surgeries um, since I was in my thirties. That's wild. That's and a lot. When I came to Africa is when I started learning how to walk again. And so because Africa- you were also bedridden for how many years? Well, it wasn't necessarily bedridden. But every time I got, I was able to get up, but I was barely moving. Mm-hmm. I had to have everybody help me with everything. And then I pushed my body to the limits. I didn't heal correctly. So I was like walking on bones that were not healed correctly, oh. things. And so I had ligaments and joints and stuff that were all messed up. So you spent most of your time in bed, but you were able to get up and yeah. so, walk. Okay. So I had a golf elbow. Mm-hmm. And that came, I think, from my sports and overdoing it. Then I played cleaned, fast pitch. And I, yeah, I played fast pitch for many years. I was a catcher, and then I was able to play every other position, like, you know, whatever. That might have hurt your elbow. Well, no, I think it was cleaning that hurt my elbow. And um, then I had, on my left side, I had hip labral tear surgery. I had SI joint fusion on my left side. And then on my left ankle, I had two internal braces put in there. And so for many years, especially when I came to Africa, just walking on the streets, I had- Everything is uneven here. Everything is uneven. So I was like scared to lift my head when I walked. I didn't know how to, if I would ever run again. Mm -hmm. And here I just, I got strong. Yeah. I got strong. You were going to the gym to like, Work. Well, it wasn't necessarily the gym. Mm-hmm. It was necessarily just being here. I had to wash clothes yeah. by hand. I had right. to walk oh, everywhere. I also had endometriosis. So when I had a broken pelvis, all that scar tissue came up and affected my reproductive system. Mm-hmm. So I was really having a hard time with that. It was very mm-hmm. brutal. And so I had liposcopic surgery and then a full hysterectomy. Mm-hmm. And that got me better with that. Okay. And then when I came back from Africa in 2022, I had some kind of tendon that was so tight from my thumb to here that it buried my nerves underneath. So what my hand was in pain. Always in always pain. Always in pain. Even when we were working together, I was mm-hmm. always in pain. So I worked through the pain. And you know, that, yeah. When you push so, and there's pain, it'll get worse. Yeah. So a very fabulous doctor did a miracle with the Lord working on my arm Wow! and released all of it. That's amazing. And I had this in June and I was telling Sylvia, I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I don't know if I'll be able to even hold the baby. I know. It's a miracle. And there's a whole lot of other reasons why the Lord sent me here, Mm -hmm. but we'll just see how that goes as I go along here. Yeah. (laughs) You've kind of been like me, coming and going from Kenya, Mm -hmm. like being here for a few years, going home for a few years, coming back for a few years. Mm -hmm. When you're in a country as a missionary or any other reason, it somehow, if you stay for any extended amount of time, it becomes like a second home. So when you're in the U.S., you're missing Kenya. When you're in Kenya, you're missing the U.S. And so you're just kind of pulled back and forth. And yeah, so you find that we go back and forth because we miss one home yeah always right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway that was a little history on eve mm-hmm. one of you guys had commented tell us something about eve 
I present to you. Yeah. Yeah. So now there you know something about Eve's history. A very strong woman, redheaded woman. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm getting yeah. gray because I'm getting older. My dad turned gray in his 30s. Mm -hmm. So when I first got here, that was my natural red. Now, you know how Sylvia is trying to dye her hair and cover up her gray it's and whatever here. here? I picked out kind of like a copper copper color. and Wow, this is what's happened to me. Yeah. So I, I they, they didn't of... have the color that they usually had when you used to dye your hair here, right? No, they didn't. She had a beautiful, and beautiful it was like it was like what color. I grew up having. Yeah, you know, so everything's kind of dulled out on me, but I brighten myself up still because I'm not yeah. sixty or something. Yet. Right. I mean, my in my mom's ancestry, they start getting gray in their twenties, mm -hmm. and so did I. I started getting a few gray hair, yeah. and then by my thirties, it was like whew, a lot. So yeah, trying to dye your hair here. My daddy. Especially highlights. Is the best man on earth. Well, I contest. <laughs> my dad. <laughs> my dad is the best dad on earth. However. We have, we have the best dads. Yes. Sylvia's dad's awesome. She has Actually, yet to meet my father, but. his Her dad reminds me a lot of my dad yeah. from just the things I've heard. I would love to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's a hoot. Any hoosies. Were you done with that thought? I think. Okay, we don't know. So <laughs> let's get into the food prep and show you guys what we're going to be doing today. Yay, Gico time. I love you. I give you everything you want me to. Think about it. If I could, I'd burn down the moon. Okay, so here Eve is pouring the charcoal in. So this is what I usually use for grilling. And then there's a little door here for ventilation. We'll open that. You used to do a lot of cooking on the Jiko, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my Jiko is rusted out. Yeah. In the bottom I might need a new one so now you're just gonna put paper and stuff it full of paper So now you just want to fan it until it lights the charcoal. This reminds me of when we first did our business. Yes. We cooked on a Jico. <laughs> it started up. Yeah, I think it's going. So here's my marinated chicken. And I'll show you what I marinated it in. So this is what I marinated it in, the American Garden Italian Dressing and Marinade. Um, I don't know why it's so expensive. This little bottle is like over 700 shillings, but it's worth it, like, it's so yummy. All right, so we're gonna use this for grilling. And this is a lot of chicken. We're gonna try to freeze um, portions of it so that it's easy, accessible, and ready to just pop out of the freezer, grilled and ready to, ready to use. So I'm just gonna place a plate over that. And then here's another one. We'll put the grilled chicken in here with a lid here. All right, the charcoal is hot. And now we're gonna put this rack on top and get ready to grill some chicken. Yeah. Here's the raw meat. <laughs> yep. Mm. 
These are cute little ones. I tried to cut them up in pieces. Which is good. That would be like measure them out. Yeah. It would be really good. That's a lot. We'll need to freeze freeze some of this. So that it lasts us for a while. Yeah. Can you believe for all that chicken breast it was only like two thousand five hundred, which Come would on. be like twenty dollars? That's crazy. I know. That's a lot of chicken. It's a lot of chicken. It can feed us for a whole week. Twenty bucks. Right? Yeah. Or maybe longer, who knows? Wow. Awesome. We have more charcoal coming. Yeah, there's more charcoal coming, and I also got um, raw ground nuts, so we'll show them how to roast those. You add water and salt over them. They're the best. And you roast them yep. here. This is what I do. <laughs> Meanwhile. It's like 10 minutes, 20 minutes on each side. They're little strips. And you could fill it up more. We could have a few pieces along the edge here too, just to make it go faster. <laughs> But meanwhile, I'm in there taking care of Tavi. He woke up. He's a cutie patootie. Steve, you're on video. Yeah. Here is my picky driver, Steve. How are you, sir? I'm good. Oh, good deal. Thank you for bringing all that. So he brought charcoal. Yes. This is charcoal for 100 shillings. And how much were the ground nuts? 300. 300. 300 shillings. So yeah. a very affordable life. That's a lot of charcoal. <laughs> This is my picky driver. Steve, can you say hi to my YouTube people? Hi. <laughs> can you tell them something about you? I, I, I can't describe myself. <laughs> you can't describe yourself. I can't describe myself. What do you do for a living? I'm just a Bora Bora driver. A Bora Bora driver? Uh -huh. A Bora Bora is like a motorbike. A motorbike yeah, we call driver. them yeah. picky pickies too. Picky pickies so but in, you help people every day. You help people get to where they're going. You help with an emergency. You help with food. I'm always available for my clients. Even yeah. when I was in the hospital, you were the one. You, we had like no Wi-Fi at our house. So when I was in the hospital, I would get Steve to bring messages to my mom and dad. Because my mom and dad were at home and I was at the hospital. So he's done a lot for me. Asante. So Eva has something she wants to ask you guys. Yeah. What would you like to see or hear from me and Sylvia? Like, what would you like to know? about Kenya and us, or what would you like us to do for an adventure? Okay, let's hear we what We already have, have a say. few that we've thought up on our own. We'll just see if you guys come up with the same things. Yeah, Yeah. let's see what they have to say. <laughs> this is smelling so good. I think we'll have it with salads for lunch yeah. today. Look at the sky. I mean, like this is perfect weather right now, guys. Kenya is so beautiful. It actually reminds me a lot of Florida, Yeah. the weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you go to Mombasa, they have like really nice beaches and stuff. So guys, I forgot to record this, but here are the ground nuts. I've washed them. And then here um, I have water and salt. And I wanted to add or try a new flavor. So I actually added dill and a little bit of garlic powder. So I'll be excited to see how that turns out. So I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna roast these. And in the meantime, I'm just getting ready to cut up some salads here for lunch. All right, Eve, what's happening? I'm on my last batch. Look at all that chicken. Unbelievable. Looks so yummy. We're stocked for a while now. Yeah. We've got our chicken every day. And, and we have just, our vegetables. We also, she prepared a wonderful salad and stir fry with chicken in there yeah. that we're going to have for our lunch and dinner. Yeah. So we're having our good meal. And then we're going to have these peanuts. We're going to show you next how we're going to roast those. Where was that? Oh, with that. Marinade. Yeah. And I have to be so safe with the stairs. Don't fall down. I don't know if Sylvia told you, but the second night. Or even, was it the night that I just got here and I got up the next morning, I felt yeah. right on my face. It was out the of first, the bed. It, it I have fallen night. four times. Just fall. And I fall hard too. <laughs> mm -hmm. But now I'm not going to fall anymore. You need to slow everything down a little I have bit. To slow down. <laughs> you move very fast. And these shoes 
are made for America soil. I'd be very careful when I'm on uneven ground with these rolling yeah. holies. Yeah. There's probably more uneven ground over here. Yeah. This is our last chicken that needs to be cooked through. So I'll turn it again and cook it on the same side again in a minute. I'm gonna let it get through. That's amazing. Yeah. I love Sylvia's marinade that she puts on here. All right, guys, I'm going to put my souffleria here on the charcoal. And then I'm going to put the ground nuts inside that I washed. Like that. Now I'm just going to stir them around and let them dry off really well before I put my water salt and dill mixture on them and then we fry them until they're crunchy and all the water is cooked off of them okay she's gonna pour her secret concoction in there well it's something i've never tried before so they might be good they might be really bad thankfully it's a a cheap food if it goes wrong yes so now you can see there's some water, so I'm just gonna coat all, all of the them. Ah. And then we're gonna just fry them until all the water is gone and the peanuts are completely dry. If they're still chewy, they're not fully done. So they have to get hard? They need to be roasted until they're really hard. So it does take a while. Okay, I'll keep stirring them. Okay. All righty. Let's wait, it'll take a while. So guys, here's my salad. We have the stir fry vegetables with chicken. And here's Eve eating her salad. The next day. Hi guys, and another day, here we are. We didn't manage to get um, to do everything we wanted to the other day when we were grilling the chicken and all that. So welcome to another day. <laughs> where I am going to just be like chopping up vegetables. Um, first of the week, we boiled some hard boiled eggs, um, which we've been eating all this week. We're now on day four. Still going strong, guys. <laughs> I actually feel a lot better um, to have cut out like all flour and sugar. Um, anyways, so let's get into it. have the iceberg lettuce which I don't actually love um, but I do also have some of this lettuce it's just that we we've eaten it the past few days um, but Eve is actually out shopping right now to get more of this kind of lettuce so we have something more green wanted to have like um usually what I like to do is put like a paper towel or a serviette in the bottom of the bag to catch like the water so it doesn't soak the salad but unfortunately I don't have any of those on hand right now and I don't have a lettuce spinner so we're just gonna put this in the bag here and I think because I don't have anything to keep the moisture away from the lettuce because it's wet from washing it. Um, I won't be cutting up this head. I'm just gonna leave that for right now and make sure that we're able to eat all of this first. Because if there's one thing I hate, I hate buying food and throwing it out. So, and I really hope we can get more leafy green lettuce 
I don't love this iceberg lettuce. Um, that's just what Corey brought home when I said lettuce. We're used to getting this one, but anyway, here we go. Ready for the fridge and ready for salads. Because of all the liquid in tomatoes, I'm going to store these in a container. And the reason I'm cutting up these vegetables is I've found for myself you eat more vegetables if they're cut up and ready to go rather than if you look in the fridge and you see carrots looking like this. You don't feel very inspired to eat them. Let me wash my hand after touching those. Um, so, and also like if we're out, one thing we usually do when we go grocery shopping is we go out for supper. We eat out a lot, too much. And that way if Corey wants to eat out, um, you know, I have this that I know I can just throw together a salad in the house. And then also like I have, um, there's only a little bit left of this, but the grilled chicken and i'll also show you later i have it like frozen in the freezer as well um it's already marinated and grilled just heated up in the microwave so so easy to have salads on hand like this and then i also have um like i said we had a whole bunch of them this week there's only like four left but having hard boiled eggs like this in the fridge is also really nice to cut up and put on salads or just to eat them in the mornings for your breakfast. So just a lot of um, food ready to go makes so that you reach for this instead of for something with carbs or sugar or something that will spoil your diet. When you're down, you close your eyes. The reason I'm using white onion, I know purple onion is really uh, popular here in Kenya. A lot of people prefer the purple onion, and I do too for cooking, but for salads, this onion is not quite as, not quite as strong, so it just works better um, for me for salads. It's a little bit milder. I don't know if I can fit all these in here. All right, I think we got it. Let's see if the lid goes on. And I hear Tavi's awake, so let me go take care of my baby and we'll be right back to cut up the broccoli, the carrots, and then I have some turkey breast I wanna slice here. I'm gonna go ahead and soak this in water until I get back. A few moments later. Okay, this is washed and I'm back. So let's cut this up. These things I wish for you. 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 This broccoli is done. So now for this, I could um, steam it to go with like fish or something like that um, or we can put it on our salads I would probably cut it up a little bit smaller if I would put it on my salad but I want to be able to have the option of either steaming it or cutting it up so here's the broccoli so here I have the carrots I'm gonna get ready to grate them and first we need to peel them
the carrots looking much more appetizing and easy to eat. The grass that grows beneath my feet. Okay guys, here is my turkey breast. It is still part of the meat that my parents brought. I had it in the freezer and I unthawed it um, and just rinsed it off. So now I'm gonna slice this really thinly and for those of you who don't know what um, deli meat is or aren't familiar with it, it's basically a pre-cooked meat um, that you can eat cold on like sandwiches or wraps. Um, the only downside of this is it has quite a bit of sodium. So I'm cutting it in small portions to so that we don't get a lot of sodium in one helping. Um, yeah, but it's still a nice protein to have with like a lettuce wrap or something like that is probably how even I will use it. All right, so here I have a clean plastic bag. So I'm just gonna put it in here. And this will give us another meat option instead of just um, chicken breast. I've seen in some of the supermarkets here in Kenya, they're starting to get like salami and like ham pieces. It's super, super expensive still um, because obviously it's imported, but they are starting to have like a few deli meats, but they're usually already sliced and packaged. But like, I think five pieces of salami are like four or five dollars like it's crazy expensive but yeah I hope one day it'll be easier accessible here in Kenya but for now this is what um, my mom brought and this will be nice for lettuce wraps and I also want to get fish for one of the next weeks um, so what I'm gonna be doing here next is I'm gonna be showing you how I make um, my homemade ranch dressing. Um, there is ranch in the supermarkets, but it really does not taste good at all. It tastes like it has like a, a mayonnaise in it that is not good. I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't taste like ranch at home at all. And this isn't exactly the same, but it kind of has the taste of like um, a restaurant style homemade ranch dressing. So I'm just gonna show you guys real quick how um, I make the ranch dressing. And if you wanna know what this is, this is frozen pumpkin <laughs> that um, my mom had cooked a pumpkin when she was here and baked some pies and like this was left of a pumpkin. So I decided um, for something different tonight instead of just salads, I'm gonna try to make this into a healthy soup that even I can enjoy um, a pumpkin soup tonight, so. That's what this is. So let's get into the ranch ranch dressing making. So first things first, um, it takes like one of these packets of ranch salad and seasoning mix. These are not found here in Kenya that I know of, unless possibly somewhere in Nairobi. Please guys, let us know if you know where to find these because I have a few Kenyan friends that are really hooked on this and they have nowhere to find it. So let me know. Um, first step is I'm gonna use this bowl. I just washed it so there's a little bit of water in it. And then this strainer. And then I have like this, I don't know, we call it a cheesecloth. I don't know what it's called, but like a cloth to make the straining even smaller than the sieve here. So we're just gonna put that in there like this. And then let me wash this bottle. And then we're gonna use this uh, Maziwalala. It is buttermilk. And we're just gonna strain it um, through this. I just wanna fill this up. There we go. And 
Then when it goes down a little bit, I'm just gonna fill it up a little bit more so I have the consistency that I want. And now we're gonna let the whey drip through the sieve to the bottom and we're gonna collect the more thick part of the milk from the top and then I'll show you how we're gonna mix this in. So we're gonna let this set here for about 20 to 30 minutes. So let me show you how it's looking. So here you can see um, I poured this in the top and then at first there's like some white milk that comes out but then it's more like you can see just the clear drops as the whey is being strained off of the mazuelala and basically what that does it just makes it thicker it gives it a thicker consistency instead of so watery then we'll add this and call it a day eve also got this italian vinaigrette dressing um, that we'll be using for our salads so yeah and then i can always make homemade dressings as well but this is our salad dressings all right guys um i'm gonna be back in about 20 to 30 minutes after this has sat here and strained for a while and i'm gonna go charge my phone so i'll be right back after this all right so as you can see let me get a spoon this mixture up here is thicker and the consistency of ranch mix and then here at the bottom is all the way the clear liquid that has come off of it so now I'm gonna get ready to sorry it's blurry now I'm gonna get ready to mix up the ranch mix in with it and we'll be done Here's the whey liquid off of it. I just pour that away. Sometimes Corey likes to drink, drink it. Here I spilled a little bit. And the rest I'm going to, actually I've decided to keep it for the pumpkin soup that I'm making for supper. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of it. So now we just take um, our packet of ranch mix and we just pour the contents in with this here we go so we just mix this together and we have our ranch dressing so this is my very glamorous um garlic chili sauce ranch container very one of a kind high pollutant And here we go, a whole bottle of ranch. All right guys, that um, concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it inspired you to also eat healthy or to make healthier choices in your diet going from day to day. And with that, we will see you guys on our next video. Bye guys. One thing's true, never ask for none.